The bustling spaceport on Conteria was a hive of activity, with traders and travelers from across the galaxy mingling amidst the cacophony of a thousand alien tongues. But beneath the veneer of commerce and prosperity, a dark undercurrent of desperation and exploitation festered. Captain Taylor Thanor strode through the crowded promenade, his rugged features set in grim determination beneath his mop of unruly dark hair streaked with silver. He was a man on a mission, driven by a deep-seated sense of justice that had earned him a reputation as both a hero to the downtrodden and a thorn in the side of the galactic elite. As he wove his way through the throngs, Taylor couldn't help but notice the haggard faces and threadbare clothes of the Contarian miners who toiled under the yoke of Magister Dravok, the corpulent Aeorian merchant who held a monopoly on the planet's rich mineral resources. Entire families were forced to work in Dravok's mines for a pittance, barely able to afford the exorbitant prices the Magister charged for basic necessities in his company stores. It was a tale as old as time itself, the strong preying on the weak, the rich gorging themselves on the suffering of the poor, but not if Taylor Thanor had anything to say about it. He ducked into a nondescript alleyway, his keen eyes scanning for any sign of surveillance. Satisfied that he wasn't being followed, Taylor activated his wrist communicator. Ari, I'm in position. What's the status on that access code? He murmured. The youthful voice of his Methian slicer crackled over the encrypted channel. Just putting the finishing touches on it now, Cap. You'll have a one-hour window to get in, grab the goods, and get out. Security's no joke on this one. Taylor allowed himself a tight smile. Breaking into the galaxy's most impenetrable bank was audacious even for him, but the payoff would be more than worth it. With the funds from selling Dravok's ill-gotten gains, he could finance a better life for the miners and their families. Education, healthcare, a chance at a future beyond the dim tunnels and choking dust. I'll be in and out before they even know I'm there, he assured Ari. Keep the engines hot and be ready to punch it the second I'm back on board. You got it, Cap. Good luck and Godspeed. Taylor took a deep breath, centering himself as he always did before a job. Then with a final check of his gear, he slipped out of the alley and melted into the crowd once more. Just another anonymous face among the multitudes. The Contarian Interstellar Bank loomed ahead, a gleaming spire of polished obsidian that seemed to drink in the light. Taylor joined the queue of well-heeled patrons, waiting to pass through the battery of biometric scanners his gaze flicking over the phalanx of stony-faced Saurian guards cradling pulse rifles. He submitted to the retinal scan and DNA swab with outward calm, silently thanking Ari for the flawless forgeries that identified him as Cyrus Vance, a Corellian shipping magnate. The board clerk waved him through with barely a glance, and then he was in, striding across the cavernous lobby with its soaring malachite pillars and intricate mosaics depicting the history of commerce. Taylor made his way to the private elevators reserved for the bank's most exclusive clientele, the ones who rented the opulent safe deposit vaults deep in the bedrock below. He swiped his counterfeit access card and stepped inside, watching the doors seal shut with a soft hiss. Vault level, he commanded, pitching his voice to match the pompous Corellian accent. The elevator hummed to life, plunging him into the bowels of the bank. When the doors opened again, Taylor found himself in a stark antechamber hewn from the living rock. A pair of hulking Saurian guards straightened to attention, their unblinking reptilian eyes fixing on him with instinctive suspicion. I'm here to access my vault, Taylor said smoothly, proffering his credentials once again. Magister Dravok sent me to retrieve some documents for him. Most urgent. The guards studied his authorization, glancing at each other with an unspoken question. Taylor held his breath, ready to go for the stunner concealed at the small of his back. But then the senior guard grunted and stepped aside, gesturing for him to proceed. Vault Sigma 12, the Saurian rasped. You have 15 minutes. Taylor nodded curtly and strode past, his heart hammering against his ribs as he counted off the vault doors. When he reached the one marked with Dravok's sigil, he swiped his card and waited for the multi-layered blast door to grind open revealing the cavernous space beyond. Crates of aurum ingots and chests of uncut jewels winked in the harsh light, but Taylor ignored the gaudy treasures, making a beeline for the massive adamantium lockbox in the center of the vault. This was his true prize, the repository of Dravok's fraudulent financial records and incriminating data crystals, evidence of a hundred different schemes and swindles. With quick economical movements, 
Taylor set to work on the lockbox's complex keypad, his fingers flying over the touchscreen as he input the override codes Ari had sliced from the bank's data core. The seconds crawled by with agonizing slowness, and Taylor was acutely aware of the limited time window ticking down. Just as he was starting to fear the codes had been discovered, there was a soft beep and the lockbox unsealed with a hiss of equalizing pressure. Taylor lifted the lid and gazed down at the neat rows of data crystals, each one laden with enough dirt to bury Dravok a hundred times over. Working swiftly, he transferred the crystals into the shielded pouch concealed beneath his tunic, his mind racing ahead to the next phase of the plan. With the evidence in hand, he could leak it to the press, exposing Dravok's corruption and bringing the weight of public outrage down on the Magister's head. But first, he had to get out of here alive. No sooner had the thought crossed his mind than a klaxon began to blare, the sound as jarring as an icy blade laid against his spine. The vault door slammed shut with a resounding clang, trapping him inside. Taylor swore under his breath, his hand flying to his concealed stunner. Ari must have tripped an alarm in the bank system, some failsafe they hadn't accounted for. The sound of booted feet thundering down the corridor outside told him the guards were coming, no doubt with orders to shoot first and ask questions later. Taylor cast about desperately, looking for some other means of escape. His gaze fell on the ventilation grate set high in the wall, just big enough for a man to crawl through. It was a long shot, but it was better than waiting around to get vaporized. Grabbing one of the aura ingots, Taylor hurled it at the grate with all his strength, the heavy metal bars buckled and tore free with a screech, clattering to the floor. Taylor leapt up and hauled himself into the opening, dragging his body into the cramped ductwork beyond. The vent was a tight fit, even for his lean frame, and the metal seared his skin as he crawled forward on his elbows, trying to ignore the thunderous echo of his own breathing. He had no idea where this duct led, but anything was better than the death trap of the vault. He froze as he heard the guards burst into the vault below, their harsh voices muffled by the metal walls. Taylor held his breath, not daring to move a muscle. If they thought to look up, but the seconds ticked by and no shouts of discovery came. Slowly, hardly daring to believe his luck, Taylor resumed his painstaking crawl, navigating by the faint glow of the service lights set at intervals along the duct. It seemed to take an eternity his muscles screaming in protest and his skin slick with sweat. But finally he reached a junction where the duct widened enough for him to turn around. A grating on the opposite wall opened onto a narrow access tunnel, a maintenance shaft of some kind. Taylor kicked out the grate and dropped down into the tunnel, his knees nearly buckling as he hit the ground. He could hear distant shouts and the pounding of feet, the guards fanning out to search for him. He had to move in fast. He set off at a run, his boots ringing on the metal grating as he pounded down the tunnel. His heart was a wild thing in his chest, adrenaline surging through his veins. Every corner he turned, he expected to run headlong into a squad of guards. But somehow he kept ahead of the pursuit, driven by desperation and the unyielding need to see this through. And then miraculously, he was bursting out into the bright sunlight of the Conterian afternoon, gulping down lungfuls of fresh air. He had emerged in a service alley behind the bank, blessedly deserted. Taylor allowed himself a grim smile as he reached for his communicator. Ari, I'm out. Warm up the engines and plot me an escape vector. It's time to blow this rock. As he set off through the twisting alleyways, the weight of the data crystals, a comforting presence against his chest, Taylor felt a fierce surge of satisfaction. Striking a blow against scum like Dravik, giving the downtrodden a fighting chance, this was what made it all worthwhile. The Stellar Samaritan had done it again. The Stellar Samaritan, a sleek Corellian freighter, knifed through the obsidian void, the flickering light of distant stars streaking past the cockpit viewports. In the pilot's seat, Ari Soren kept a watchful eye on the sensor readouts, her slender fingers dancing across the control interface as she fine-tuned their course. Ari was young for a slicer of her caliber, barely into her second decade, but her skills were already legend in certain circles. With her shock of spiky black hair, pierced eyebrow, and quick darting eyes, she looked every inch the part of the cocky, unconventional tech prodigy. Behind her, Taylor paced the cramped confines of the cockpit, his boots ringing on the deck plates. The adrenaline of the heist was still singing in his veins, but his thoughts were already racing ahead, grappling with the next steps in his audacious plan.
We need to get this evidence into the right hands, he said, his voice tight with urgency. Someone with the clout to take Dravik down and the integrity to see it through. Ares swiveled in her chair to face him, her expression pensive. That's a tall order, Cap. Dravik's got half the politicians on Conteria in his pocket, and the other half are too scared of him to make a move. Taylor nodded grimly. He had seen it too many times before. The way power and wealth could corrupt even the most principled of individuals, turning them into craven puppets dancing to the tune of their masters. What about the press? He asked, grasping at straws. If we leak the story to the right journalists, someone with a reputation for muckraking and a nose for corruption? Ari shook her head. Dravik owns most of the major news outlets on Conteria. Any story that paints him in a bad light will get spiked before it ever sees the light of day. Taylor slammed his fist against the bulkhead in frustration, making Ari flinch. Damn it, there has to be someone we can trust. Someone with the backbone to stand up to that bloated slug and fight for what's right. Ari was silent for a long moment, her brow furrowed in thought. Then slowly, a sly smile spread across her face. What about the adjudicators? She said, her eyes glinting with mischief. Taylor stared at her, nonplussed. The adjudicators? You mean those self-righteous zealots who go around sticking their noses into everyone's business in the name of galactic law? Ari leaned forward, her voice low and urgent. Think about it, Cap. The adjudicators are incorruptible. They answer to no one but their own rigid code of ethics. And they have a long history of taking down high-profile targets who think they're above the law. Taylor chewed his lip, considering. It was true that the adjudicators had a fearsome reputation as implacable warriors for justice, pursuing their quarry across the galaxy with single-minded determination. But they were also notoriously difficult to contact, operating from hidden bases and shrouded in layers of secrecy. Even if we could get a message to them, there's no guarantee they would take the case, he said slowly. Dravok's crimes are terrible, but they're a long way from the kind of galaxy-shaking threats the adjudicators usually deal with. Ari's smile widened. Ah, but that's where you're wrong, Cap. You see, I did a little digging into Dravok's financial records while I was slicing the bank's system, and I found something very interesting. She swiveled back to her console and brought up a holographic display, her fingers flying over the keys. A complex web of glowing lines and nodes sprang into being, hovering in the air before them. See this, Ari said, pointing to a pulsing nexus at the heart of the web. That's Dravik's holding company, the one he uses to funnel all his dirty money. But look at these other nodes, the ones radiating out from the center. Taylor leaned in, squinting at the display. The nodes Ari was indicating were labeled with names he didn't recognize. Razax Industries, Novalith Dynamics, Cyberdyne Systems. I've never heard of any of these companies, he said, frowning. What are they? Shell corporations, or Ari said, her voice thrumming with excitement, fronts for some of the most notorious arms dealers and black market traders in the galaxy, and every single one of them has been receiving regular payments from Dravox accounts. Taylor felt a chill run down his spine as the implications sank in. You're saying Dravok is using the money he's skimming from the miners to finance illegal weapons deals? Ari nodded, her eyes hard. And not just any weapons. We're talking next-gen stuff. Plasma cannons, grav bombs, nanotech plagues. The kind of horrors that could destabilize entire star systems if they fell into the wrong hands. Taylor stepped back, his mind reeling. Suddenly, Dravik's crimes had taken on a whole new dimension. No longer just the petty greed of a small-time tyrant, but a threat to the very fabric of galactic peace. This is bigger than we ever imagined, he said hoarsely. We can't just sit on this information. We have to act, and fast. Ari's fingers were already flying over her console again, her face set in grim determination. I'm composing a message to the adjudicators now, along with a data packet containing all the evidence we've gathered. If we can get this into their hands, they'll have no choice but to act. Taylor nodded, feeling a renewed sense of purpose flooding through him. This was what he had dedicated his life to, fighting for the oppressed, standing up to the corrupt and the powerful, no matter the cost. Do it, he said, his voice ringing with conviction, and pray that the adjudicators are as incorruptible as their reputation suggests. Because if they aren't, he left the thought unfinished. But Ari understood. If the adjudicators failed them, 
If Drabok's web of influence extended even into the ranks of the galaxy's most feared lawkeepers, then there would be no justice for the miners of Conteria, no hope for a better future. And the stellar Samaritan would be left to stand alone against the gathering darkness, a solitary candle flickering in the vast, uncaring night of the cosmos. But as Taylor watched Aerie work, her face limbed in the ghostly light of the holographic display, he felt a flicker of something else stirring in his chest, a fierce, unquenchable pride in the fiery spirit of his young friend, in the courage and determination that burned within her like a supernova. Together they would see this through to the end, no matter the odds, for the miners of Conteria, for the countless innocents ground beneath the boot heels of tyrants like Dravok, and for the simple, unshakable belief that even in the darkest of times, there was still light to be found, still hope to cling to. The stellar Samaritan would not rest until that light shone bright across the galaxy once more. The message was sent. The die was cast. Now all Taylor and Ari could do was wait, hoping against hope that their desperate plea would find its way to the right ears. They set a course for the outer rim, putting as much distance between themselves and Conteria as possible. The Stellar Samaritan had a few bolt holes scattered across the lawless fringes of civilized space, places where they could lay low and regroup while they waited for word from the adjudicators. As the ship hurtled through that void, Taylor found himself pacing the cramped confines of the cargo hold, his mind churning with doubts and second guesses. Had they done the right thing, putting their faith in the adjudicators? What if Ari's message was intercepted, traced back to them? What if Dravik's reach extended further than they ever imagined? Ari found him there amidst the stacked crates and humming power conduits. She leaned against a bulkhead, watching him with a mixture of concern and exasperation. You're going to wear a hole in the deck plates if you keep that up, she said dryly. Taylor shot her a rueful grin, running a hand through his hair. Sorry, I just can't help feeling like we're flying blind here. Putting all our eggs in one basket with this adjudicator gambit. Ari pushed off from the bulkhead and crossed to him, laying a comforting hand on his arm. It's the best play we have, Cap. We've done all we can for now. The rest is up to the fates. Taylor sighed, feeling some of the tension drain out of him at her touch. Ari had a way of grounding him, of cutting through the noise in his head and reminding him of what really mattered. I know, he said softly. I just can't shake the feeling that this is bigger than us, bigger than anything we've faced before. The thought of all those miners toiling away in Dravik's hellholes while that fat slug lines his pockets with their misery. Ari's grip tightened on his arm, her eyes flashing with fierce determination. We'll make it right, Cap. One way or another, we'll see justice done. That's a promise. Taylor looked down at her, marveling at the strength and conviction in her young face. Not for the first time, he found himself wondering what he had done to deserve such unwavering loyalty, such steadfast friendship. I believe you, he said, managing a smile. And whatever happens, I'm glad you're here with me, Ari. I couldn't ask for a better partner in this fight. Ari grinned, punching him lightly on the shoulder. Damn straight. We're in this together, Cap, to the end of the line. Just then a chime sounded from the ship's intercom, an incoming transmission on the encrypted channel. Taylor and Ari exchanged a look of trepidation mixed with wild hope. They raced to the cockpit, Ari sliding into the pilot's chair as Taylor hovered behind her, his heart hammering against his ribs. With a few deft keystrokes, Ari brought up the transmission on the main view screen. A figure resolved out of the static, clad in the severe black robes of an adjudicator. The hood was drawn low over the figure's face, obscuring their features, but the voice that emerged was female, rich and resonant. Taylor Thanor, I am adjudicator Jara Krell. I have received your transmission and reviewed the evidence you provided. You have uncovered a web of corruption and deceit that threatens the very foundations of galactic order. Taylor felt a surge of relief and vindication flood through him. The adjudicators had heard their call, had recognized the gravity of the situation. Maybe, just maybe, there was still a chance to set things right. Adjudicator Krell, thank you for responding, he said, fighting to keep his voice steady. Magister Dravik's crimes are an affront to every principle of justice and decency. He must be stopped and his victims must have recompense. The hooded figure inclined her head slightly. Agreed. The evidence you have provided is damning, but it is only the beginning. To bring Dravik to justice, we will need to build an airtight case one that will stand up in the courts of a dozen star systems. 
Ari leaned forward, her eyes intent. What do you need from us, adjudicator? We're ready to do whatever it takes to see this through. Krell was silent for a moment, considering. For now, I need you to continue gathering evidence. Dig deeper into Dravik's network. Follow the money trails. Uncover every dirty deal and backroom handshake. We must leave no stone unturned. Taylor nodded grimly. It was a tall order, but he had never been one to shy away from a challenge. We'll do it. You can count on us, adjudicator. I know I can, Krell said, and there was a hint of warmth in her stern voice. The adjudicators have long been aware of your work, Taylor Thanor. You are a true champion of the oppressed, a beacon of hope in the darkness. It is an honor to fight alongside you in this cause. Taylor felt a lump rise in his throat, humbled by the adjudicator's words. He had never sought recognition or acclaim for his deeds, had always been content to operate in the shadows, a silent guardian standing watch over the vulnerable and the forgotten. But to hear his efforts acknowledged by one of the galaxy's most respected defenders of justice, it meant more than he could express. The honor is mine, Adjudicator Krell, he managed to say. We won't let you down. Dravok's days of tyranny are numbered. The hooded figure bowed her head in acknowledgement. Then let us begin. I will be in contact with further instructions. Until then, stay safe, stay hidden, and stay the course. The road ahead will be long and perilous, but together we will see justice done. With that, the transmission winked out, leaving Taylor and Ari alone in the cockpit once more. For a long moment, they simply stared at each other, the weight of the task before them settling on their shoulders like a mantle. Then Ari cracked a grin, her eyes sparkling with mischief and determination. Well, Cap, looks like we've got our work cut out for us, ready to dive back into the muck and start kicking over some more rocks. Taylor returned her grin, feeling a renewed sense of purpose and resolve flooding through him. Always, let's get to it. And as the Stellar Samaritan hurtled onwards through the endless expanse of space, the Stellar Samaritan and his intrepid partner set to work, their hearts afire with the unquenchable flame of justice, their spirits buoyed by the knowledge that they were no longer alone in this fight. The adjudicators had heard their call, and together they would see the light of hope rekindled across the galaxy one shattered tyranny at a time. The weeks that followed were a whirlwind of activity and danger, as Taylor and Ari threw themselves into the task of unraveling Dravok's web of corruption. They chased down leads across a dozen star systems, infiltrated the ranks of the Magister's criminal associates, and pieced together a damning tapestry of evidence that stretched from the glittering spires of the core worlds to the lawless fringes of the Outer Rim. All the while, they stayed in constant contact with Adjudicator Krell, feeding her a steady stream of intel and coordinating their efforts with the precision of a military campaign. The Adjudicator proved to be a formidable ally, marshalling the resources of her order to strike at Dravok's empire from a dozen different angles. But even as they made progress, the danger grew ever greater. Dravok's minions were on their trail, a pack of ruthless bounty hunters and cold-eyed assassins who would stop at nothing to protect their master's interests. Taylor and Aerie found themselves constantly on the move, staying one step ahead of their pursuers through a combination of skill, cunning, and sheer luck. And then just when it seemed that the net was closing in, that they had nowhere left to run, the trap was sprung. It happened on a remote mining outpost in the Contarian system, one of the last links in the chain of evidence they needed to bring Dravok down. Taylor and Aerie had infiltrated the outpost posing as maintenance workers, hoping to slice into the central computer core and download the final piece of the puzzle. But Dravok had been waiting for them. As they made their way through the labyrinthine tunnels of the outpost, a squad of the Magister's elite mercenaries ambushed them, armed to the teeth and out for blood. The firefight that followed was brutal and desperate, a close quarters battle through the claustrophobic confines of the outpost. Taylor and Ari fought back with everything they had, their blasters spitting fire and their wits pushed to the breaking point. But in the end, it was not enough. A well-placed shot from a mercenary's plasma rifle caught Ari in the chest, sending her crumpling to the ground in a spray of blood and sparks. Taylor let out a howl of anguish and rage, charging the mercenaries with reckless abandon, his blaster blazing. He took down three of them before a stun bolt caught him square in the back, sending him into a twitching, convulsing heap on the floor. The last thing he saw before the darkness claimed him was Ari's still form, her chest rising and falling shallowly a pool of blood spreading beneath her. When he awoke, 
He was in a holding cell deep in the bowels of Dravok's fortress, his body aching and his mind reeling with fear for Ari's fate. The Magister himself came to gloat, his bloated face split in a cruel, triumphant grin. Did you really think you could defy me, Thanor? Dravok sneered, his voice dripping with contempt. Did you really believe that a washed-up smuggler and a half-grown slicer could bring down an empire? Your arrogance has cost you everything, and now it will cost you your life. Taylor said nothing, his eyes burning with defiance and his heart filled with desperate hope. Ari was badly hurt, but she was alive. The mission had suffered a setback, but it was not over yet. He clung to that hope, that fierce, unquenchable determination, even as Dravik's laughter echoed in his ears. And then, just as it seemed that all was lost, the cell door burst open with a deafening clang, and a figure strode through the smoke and chaos, a figure clad in the black robes of an adjudicator. It was Krell, her hood thrown back to reveal a face of chiseled determination, her eyes blazing with righteous fury. At her back stood a dozen more adjudicators, their energy pikes crackling with power, their faces set in grim resolve. Magister Dravok! Krell's voice rang out, clear and commanding. By the authority of the Galactic Adjudicators, I hereby place you under arrest for crimes against sentience, including slavery, extortion, arms trafficking, and murder. You will face justice for your actions, and your victims will have their day in court. Dravok's face went pale with shock and rage, his jowls quivering. You, you can't do this. I am a Magister of the Trade Council. I have immunity. Krell's lip curled in a sneer of contempt. Your immunity means nothing in the face of the evidence we have gathered. The adjudicators answer to a higher law, and that law demands that you pay for your crimes. She gestured to her fellow adjudicators, who surged forward to seize the sputtering Dravok and drag him away in chains. Then she turned to Taylor, her face softening with compassion. Taylor Thanor, you have done a great service to the galaxy this day. Your bravery and sacrifice will not be forgotten. Ari is badly wounded, but she will live. Our medics are tending to her now. She will recover, and together you will continue the fight for justice. Taylor felt a surge of emotion rise in his throat, a mixture of relief and gratitude and fierce, unquenchable pride. He struggled to his feet, meeting Krell's gaze, with a fire rekindled in his eyes. Thank you, Adjudicator, he said hoarsely, for everything. Ari, Ari will be proud to know that her sacrifice was not in vain, that the fight will go on. Krell clasped his shoulder, her grip strong and reassuring. And go on it will, Taylor, with you and Ari at the forefront, leading the charge, the stellar Samaritans, beacons of hope for the galaxy. Taylor nodded, feeling the weight of that mantle settle on his shoulders once more. It was a heavy burden, but one he would bear with pride and determination, with Ari at his side in the fight for justice. Together he and Krell strode out of the cell, out of the darkness, and into the light. There was still much work to be done, many more battles to be fought. But with the adjudicators at their side and the fire of righteousness in their hearts, Taylor knew that no tyranny could stand against them forever. The stellar Samaritans would fly again, shining symbols of hope and defiance in the face of oppression, and the galaxy would tremble before the coming storm of justice as the light of freedom dawned across a thousand worlds.